Hi, welcome to part 2 of the tips and tricks video for the Samsung One UI slash Android 9. So if you missed out part 1, make sure to check that out. The link is right over here. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And just so you know, you can use these tips for both the Samsung Note 9 and the Samsung Galaxy S9 and the S9 Plus. So there is really not much difference between these two phones when it comes to software. So if I'm giving a tip for the Note 9, it will also work on the S9 Plus. Anyways, let's go ahead and start the video. Now this is another question that I get quite often on my channel. Has Samsung removed screen recorder from the game launcher? No, it's still there inside the game launcher. And you can also use the screen recorder to record certain apps. Now this screen recorder does not work in Netflix and Amazon Prime Video but it does work in most apps. Now if you don't have game launcher enabled, I suggest you go ahead and enable it, go to settings. Scroll down here and go to advanced features and make sure game launcher is turned on. Now once you turn on game launcher, open this up and make sure it is set to performance mode. Click on apply, then launch the game. For example, let's launch Subway Surfers. Now once you're inside a game, just swipe up to reveal the nav bar and tap on this button here. You see that? Tap on this button and you have record, screenshot, screen touch lock and navigation button lock. What you're looking for is the record button. So let's just play this and if I want to record, I'll do this. Start recording and the phone will start recording my gameplay. See? Uh, you see that? The game launcher is still available and I'm kind of looking into the camera screen and playing so it's a little bit difficult to play like this. So let's stop the recording. So once the recording stops, let's minimize this. I'll open gallery and you see the recorded video is right here and the quality is also quite good. So here's the thing. I want to record certain apps without downloading a third party screen recorder. Now, if you want to use the built in screen recorder to record some apps, we can actually go ahead and trick the inbuilt screen recorder into thinking that some apps are actually games. First off, you'll need to have game launcher enabled, then press these three dots and tap on add game. Now add whichever app you want to record. For example, I want to record Instagram. Tap on add and you see Instagram will appear over here inside the game launcher. Launch the app and you'll see this nav bar. Press on this icon here and tap on record. You see, that's it. The recording starts. So all of these visuals will be recorded into a MP4 video file. And once you're done, just press this stop button. And let's go back to the home screen and let's open the gallery. And there you have it. That's the video we just recorded. And you can go ahead and share this with your friends because it's just a regular MP4 video. Just press the share button and you can share this with anyone you like. And look at this, it also works for Snapchat. So I can just tap on this and press record and it will start recording. I'm not sure if it's going to tell the other person you're recording a video or you've taken a screenshot, but yeah, it does work. So let's press stop and let's see uh, what the recorded video is. So there you have it. That's the recorded video. But there's a little catch to this. If I'm recording something in Instagram, so let's start recording. Now, for example, if I want to leave the app and do something else, I'll, if I want to go to settings, if I'll go to settings, you see the recording will stop. So it works only in that particular app. And this is why I recommend that you download a third party screen recorder, which works kind of system wide. So I personally recommend you screen recorder because this one works system wide and uh, you see we are recording now and there are no interruptions. I can just start using any app I want. Uh, it won't stop or anything. I can open settings and it's still recording. But yeah, if you don't want to download a third party app, you can use the built in screen recorder which comes with the game launcher. If you plan to play games on your phone or do some serious multitasking or open a lot of apps, I suggest that you change the power mode to high performance. So to do that, drop down the notification bar and long press this power mode. And here we have four options. We have high performance, optimized, medium power saving and maximum power saving. If you want the phone to perform at its best, change it to high performance and click on apply. Now the phone will perform the best and this does use a lot more battery power because the CPU speed limiter is turned off. I do recommend that you keep it on optimized because that gives you the best balance of performance and the battery life. Then we have medium power savings. Medium power savings also limits the CPU to 70%. So let's apply this. 
and even if you keep the phone on medium power savings which limits the CPU to 70% you will barely notice any difference I mean the phone is like lag free but you might notice some difference when you open a lot of apps then the fourth one we have here is called maximum power savings now this one will disable a lot of your apps and it will also drop down the screen resolution to HD so let's click on apply and a lot of elements will get disabled so no animations background data has been restricted and you see that a lot of apps have disappeared the settings menu is like simplified now let's see the drop down notification bar you see a lot of items are missing from over here so this maximum power savings is for the worst case scenario when you don't have the charger available at hand and if you tap on this plus icon you'll see a lot of apps are not available so for example instagram is not available but we do have access to basic apps like maps is available gallery is there and you can also browse the internet but you can see the phone kind of is a little bit slow so let's turn this off and return back to normal so this is a tip that will allow you to save some battery power when there's no charger available well you guys might ask where is the power mode and especially i got this question on my channel where is the mobile data where did you get it so you need to tap these three buttons here tap on these three buttons and tap on button order and here you can remove or add icons so for example i can remove mobile data and you see now mobile data is not available in this menu so that's exactly how i got it i have included everything so um there you go we have added mobile data back so if you don't see this power mode option it's probably hidden over here just drag and drop it to this uh, drop down notification bar did you guys notice i'm using navigation gestures so this is back this is home and this is recent there's there are no navigation buttons on the screen and this gives you more screen area to work with because uh, there is no black bar on the bottom of the screen so to enable navigation gestures you'll need to go to settings then tap on display scroll down here to the part which says navigation bar and when you upgrade your phone to android 9 it will be set to navigation buttons and you'll have these buttons here and people were asking me how to hide this navigation bar because you cannot hide this anymore and whenever you wanted the navigation bar you can just swipe up and the navigation bar will appear that feature has been removed and this has been replaced by full screen gestures then tap on this button to enable full screen gestures and again gesture hints will be turned on so you'll see something like this turn off gesture hints and once you do this you'll have a more immersive experience because there is no navigation bar taking up this much space on the bottom of your screen and it works quite well because once you're typing something it makes a lot of difference because you see there's a lot of space available here so there is no black bars on the bottom of your screen and by the way this is the swift key keyboard Samsung keyboard did not work that well so I replaced it with SwiftKey and I do like the SwiftKey keyboard you do have some options here like you can set your own picture as a theme but it comes with nice themes that are built in and now coming back to the gestures you can change the button order so you can have the back button on your right home in the middle and then recent key on to your left so now this will be a recent key and this will be your back button so but do, I do prefer this one so I prefer my back key to be on the left and I want my recent key to be on the right. So this is a cool little tip and I think you should try and use full screen gestures because it does give you a more immersive experience especially when you're chatting with someone because you do have a lot more content on the screen. Someone was asking does anyone know what happened to multi window? If I'm not wrong, multi window is now known as pop up view. I think Samsung changed its name. Previously, it used to be called multi window. But the good thing is, on Android Pie, multi window slash pop up view is still there. So, open up an app, whichever app you want to use in pop up view. For example, let's open Chrome. And then, after opening up the app, you need to go to Recents, then tap on this button and select Open in pop up view. And this is your multi window. You can move it around, then resize it if you want. And if I remember, on Android Oreo, if you wanted to use the multi-window option, you used to just do this and the app would start running in a multi-window mode. Now with Android Pie, Samsung has removed that feature and now you have to open up Recents, tap on this icon and then select Pop-up View. So I think this is a little bit counterintuitive because it adds 2-3 to three extra steps before you could just do this and the app would start running in a multi-window mode. And if you press this, you can also make the app slightly transparent. And you can also do this with the camera app. So let's launch camera, recents, 
tap on the camera icon then select open in pop-up view and now you can use the camera in a pop-up view like this that's quite useful uh, especially if you're doing some work for example I'm browsing the internet and I want to use the camera real quick and use do this take photo and then go back to my work and then you can also minimize the app by pressing this button and it will go into this minimized mode you can minimize as many apps you want and then you can resume a particular app from over here so this is called pop-up view and this is Samsung's way of doing multitasking now there's another one on here which is Google's way of doing multitasking so first off let's maximize these apps go full screen then you tap on the recent key once again I'm using gestures and then tap on the icon and select open in split screen view now this is Google's way of doing multitasking where you have two apps running on the same screen and here's a tip if you open up YouTube in pop-up view you can actually go ahead and use YouTube listen to your music while you do some other work because you guys know Google does not allow YouTube to play in the background so you can see it's playing if we minimize YouTube the music will stop but you can use this in pop-up view to keep your music playing in the background so let's open this up in pop-up view and uh, make it slightly transparent make it small so you can see music is playing we can just hide this over here and keep on doing our work so this is one way you can trick the YouTube app into thinking that it's running full screen yeah and you can continue on listening to your music and we can also do this in split screen mode so just do this and open in split screen view and then in the second window open whichever app you want so now you can listen to your favorite music on YouTube and still do your work in the web browser but once again I think the Samsung's way of doing multitasking is much better so now I'm going to give you some tips that will help extend the battery backup of your Samsung Galaxy phone. Now we've already covered power mode. If you want more battery backup, you can change the power mode to medium power saving. Now I always keep my power mode set to optimize because I get fairly good battery backup out of this phone. Now my Galaxy Note 9 gives me about 6 to 7 hours of screen on time and depending upon the usage, the phone lasts about 2 days. So let me go to settings and show you my battery backup. So device care and then battery battery usage and you see I have screen on time of about 5 hours and 34 minutes and I recharge my battery around 25% so I, I kind of end up getting six and a half hours of screen on time with about two days now take a look at my last charge time I charged my phone about one day 11 hours ago and that's fairly decent battery backup considering this is quite a powerful phone now battery backup depends upon a lot of things number one it depends upon your signal strength if you have low signal strength then your battery will drain fairly quickly and number two it depends on how many apps you've installed and number three it depends on what type of apps you've installed particularly if you install Facebook and Facebook Messenger those two apps are quite intensive and they'll drain your battery fairly quickly and again if you play games on your phone yeah say goodbye to your battery backup then and just so you know I don't play any games on my phone so I've just uninstalled all those games that were here and also note I don't have Facebook and Facebook Messenger so uninstall Facebook and Facebook Messenger you can use uh, Facebook through the web browser so that will help you save about half a day worth of battery oh what the heck the camera just stopped recording for no reason so I was just talking to myself <laughs> anyway let's go back here and tap on these three dots go to setting and make sure adapter battery is turned on then put unused apps to sleep is also turned on now the sleeping apps feature is fantastic it allows you to forcefully put apps to sleep which you don't use so these apps will not run in the background so this is another uh, tip that will help you to save some battery power and you can just tap on add and add apps from your installed apps for example if you don't want Amazon shopping to run in the background you can add it to this list but do keep in mind if the app is not running in the background it will not be active and therefore it will not send you any notification so guys this is how I'm able to get good battery backup and you can also turn on this feature auto disable unused apps so these apps have been disabled because I haven't used these apps in the past 30 days then optimize settings this is also turned on that's fine and here you can also turn on and off fast charging 
so fast cable charging and fast wireless charging i do keep these turned on because i do like the fast charging capability of the samsung galaxy note 9 all right so this is my battery usage on the s9 plus you can see i've got three hours one minute of screen on time and i'm down to 30 percent and I'm also down to 30, no, 29% on the Note 9, but Note 9 gives me 5 hours, 45 minutes of screen on time, but the S9 Plus gives me only 3 hours and 1 minute. And this is with the exact same settings and the exact same apps installed on both these phones. And just so you know, these two are the Exynos 9810 version, not the Snapdragon. And also do note that the S9 Plus has a smaller battery, 3500 milliamps versus 4000 on the Note 9. Alright guys, that brings us to the end of this video. Stay tuned for the part number 3 of tips and tricks video for the Samsung One UI. So I think in the third installment, I'll change my style and I'll give you some more tips like how to transfer files using Wi-Fi and that kind of works on every Android smartphone so that's not exclusive to Android One UI. Anyways, I think it's a good idea to show you guys so I'll cover that in the next video. Alright, so thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Stay tuned for the next installment and if you haven't watched the previous video, make sure that you watch it and I will see you guys next time.